and where you don't need Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala's help, that I'm doing this. I don't need it. Why? If he is Rabbul Alameen, he's Rabbul Mashriqi wal Maghribi wa Bainahu, he's Rabbul Samawati wal Ard. If he controls every situation, he controls every heart, he controls every mind in the world, he controls the mind of the people around you. He controls everything and anything that you have around you. So if everything is within the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then why not that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything? This is what dua means. And this is why we find in many of the situations, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to help Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa sallam to understand the importance of dua. So he would go into the masjid, he would gather the, gather the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa sallam. Yes, Ya Rasulullah, what do you need? Come on. Each of you make a dua and we all will be saying Ameen. SubhanAllah. They will say, Ya Rasulullah, you should make the dua and we will say the Ameen. He said, yes, I would make it too. But dua is a direct connection between you and your Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when a person, one person say, say, says the dua and the other people say the Ameen for his dua, for things that he would like to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, this is as if people are interceding on his behalf, Ya Rabb, Ya Allah. Please accept his dua. So, in this type of situations, dua uh, are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are not rejected. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would make each and every sahabi to make dua. In one of the situations of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came out. And he sent me for some of his work. And then he sat with the other sahaba and they started making dua. And he said, okay, each of you make dua and we all will say ameen. So one of the sahaba radiallahu anhu said, made the dua. And including Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the other sahaba said, Ameen. Then the other sahaba made the dua, and everyone says, Ameen. And this is how they're taking turns. Finally, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu came all the way at the end when everyone was done. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Abu Hurairah, now it's your turn. We all made the dua, and we all said, Ameen on our dua. Now it's your turn. So Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, he doesn't know what everyone asked for, but such a great gathering. And he missed so much of those prayers, and he feels bad about it. So first dua he makes, Ya Allah, give me every good that these people asked for. And everyone says, Ameen. In addition to this, Ya Allah, give me the highest knowledge of deen. And Ameen. So he finishes that two words, he finishes his dua. So other sahaba Ridwan Allah Majmain said, Ya Rasulullah, could we stand again? <laughs> he got everything. Could we stand again? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is a connection between a person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at that very time, when a person feels that dua is going to be accepted, Allah is listening to me, and you make the dua, at that time is the real time of the acceptance of the dua. Now if you just make it because you heard him making it, will not have that effect. So, you're, you, it's done now. He got it. Umar radiallahu anhu's habit was, after Salat al-Isha, he would not allow anyone to sit in the masjid and just sit and chat. He would say, go back home, sleep, because that is the sunnah. After the shah, go to sleep, wake up early in the morning. One day, few of the Sahaba Ridwanullah and Ibrahim are sitting together. Umar radiyan goes to them, what makes you people sit here? We thought today we want to make some dua. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, then this is the best thing. And he sits with them, okay, step. And they all start making dua. And Umar radiallahu anhu at the end makes the dua and the Sahabi, uh, I think it was Abdullah uh, ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu says that at the end when Umar radiallahu anhu started making the dua, we understood how come his duas are always above our dua. And he says something and he says, okay, I will get it done. How? Through I will inshallah make dua tonight. And that night we understood why he is so confident in his dua. When he started making dua, as he was just as he, if he is talking to Allah, he is talking, he doesn't care about anything happening around him, he is talking to Allah, and tears are continuously dripping of his eyes, just like a child is begging his father, his mother, his parents, I need it, I want it, I want it, Ya Allah, just give it to me, Ya Allah, I just want it, and I'm not going to end until you give it to me. And he's insisting and saying, we realize what was the real dua in our life, in the life of Allah. So this is really a connection that we need to establish. And 
we need to establish it in a way that even people around us, our children, every person that sees us, they see this Iman, our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this dua. I know, reading it in the history, that in the past as children were raised, there are many of those, no time to go into the details of it, who express their feelings as they grow up, that we used to wake up during the night time from the cries of our mothers. And they get up to see what makes our mother cry, and they see that the mother is sitting on a musalla. She's sitting on a musalla, and she's crying, and she's crying. She's begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while she's making the dua. They saw those things in their lives. So Ridwanullah saw it in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How many hadiths do we read that we find that they saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam crying over throughout the night. Aisha radiallahu anha says, one night he cries so many, the whole beard is soaked with tears. Then even the musalla that he's sitting on was soaked in tears. This is, this is the dua, this is the connection of the dua with Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us that connection and give us tawfiq to establish this connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I said, it's one of the strongest connections that you can establish and easiest to do. It's very easy, very easy. It's only from now on. The first thing we need to do is just assign five, ten minutes of your time. In addition to the time of the prayers and, and all of this. Just five, ten minutes of our time, of daily schedule, where we all, this is what we will do. We will put our musalla in the corner of the house, and we raise our hands before Rabbul Alameen, and start, talk, start talking to Rabbul Alameen, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just do that, do this for yourself for five, ten minutes every day, and then you will see what a connection that you have established. Better than any other thing that you have in your life. This will be the greatest, greatest treasure that you have earned in your life. Just start with these five, ten minutes every day, and then inshallah we will see the change in our iman, in our aqeedah, in our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of us and guide all of us to salat al-mustaqeem. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nisa'ir al-muslimina wa al-muslimat wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.